Welcome to Iron Man Raid Specialist, featuring Quan Man Raid. The goal of this series is to acquire gear and skills to perfect a Raids Willing Specialist account. Every 75 Raids I can go for 1 of 19 upgrades necessary to build this account, ending at 1500 Soul Raids. Please enjoy the series. Oh, purple. Hell yeah. Alright, let's just open this up, boys. Oh my god, I only I only ever get prayer scrolls now. So my last five drops, four of them were arcanes. And the one before this was uh was a deck scroll. <laughs> Statistically, they are like the most common drops ever. So you know, suck it up. Yes. I will suck it up. I'll suck up on the uh I'll just, you know, wipe my tears with these Charmin Ultras, dude. Honestly. That flame, bro. Monka. Always gotta be careful of that flame. Especially when you transition from something Monka as like poison. Is that the Easter egg thing? Huh. That's a. That's an Easter. Uh, that must be the Easter egg of Easter eggs. Yeah. Uh huh. So, apparently, I did not record the clip of me getting 1350kc, but luckily, shout out to Runelight for auto-recording the kc, so I did reach 1350, which means I can go for my next unlock, which I believe I said an episode or two ago was going to be the Bandos Tacits. Yes, that means we're going back to Bandos. We got really lucky on the Bandos uh, chest plate there. I think I ended up finishing that grind with under 50kc or something. So, I wonder what Tassus is going to be like for us. But yeah, we're going to get ready for some Bandos. I'm excited to uh, change up the content, you know, with, with some God Wars. So, for the first Bandos method I want to work on is going to be the more complicated Perflick Melee Bandos method. Just because I never got good at it, and I thought it would be fun to get good at it while grinding for the Bandos Tassus. So, I am going to start off with the Rapier, even though I have the Scythe, I think the Rapier will allow me to practice better, as the kills will generally be slower, so I have more time to actually practice. But once I get comfortable enough though, uh, we're gonna move on to the Scythe just to speed things up, in case it starts taking a long time to get the Tassus. The Scythe will definitely uh, speed it up, but for now, we'll use the Rapier until we get better at it, the method. So yeah, standard setup, just gonna use uh, healing with Blood Barrage, Bones of Peaches. You know, a bit of Bruce, Restores, and Hard Food. So this newer update with the runes being split to normal accounts and armor accounts is really cool because, as you can see, this is not the room that I'm going to be going in. Even though it shows that there's a bunch of probably Venezuelans or something. But yeah, if you right-click it, it'll say there's nobody in there, so I can just go right in and it'll generate the extra room. So there are a ton of methods nowadays to do bandos, such as range and magic. I've demonstrated some magic before, and I might do some range if I get bored of the melee method. I just want to have some fun. But let's talk about the melee method, right? A lot of you guys are probably going to start doing bandos for the first time, and you might be wondering, okay, how do you go about it? How do you transition into better methods? Because usually what people do is, they just rely on the Warhammer spec. If it lands, kills are usually good. If it doesn't, then you have a bad trip. So most people just do the 2 to 1 strat, right? You hit the boss twice, you go under, and then you go out again. You don't do any fancy prayer switches. However, those methods, you know, you don't get too many kills, man. Maybe 5 you get lucky. Most people I see probably starts off with like 1 or 2 kill trips. Now, if you learn how to do mage flicking method, you can definitely increase your kills from like that to 5 to 10. And then ultimately learning like full on prayer flicking methods can get you like probably 10, 20, 30, sky's the limit. So at the start of the kill, I can't really flick all three minions, at least not yet because uh, they're not off ticked. But as you can see, I'm pretty decent at the mage flicking method still, so at least I can use that for the first kill. So for most of you guys doing bandos, I would say you should definitely bring blood barrage if possible. I find this a lot more reliable than something like Guthans and more accessible too. And you don't really need to bring much. Just bring one magic weapon and maybe one extra accessory. I bring a cult. And if you're worried about accuracy issues, just take off your armor like I do. 
it's really nice. So even an ancient staff would help tons here. I need to move these down here because I don't really want to waste it. I only want to start the Bandos fight with a uh, high HP. But I don't really need an angler much else after that. Let me just show you of a kill of me attempting to learn the full on prayer flicking method with melee. So the first thing that I'm trying to really get down is just the start. Because the start is important, you need to make sure the major and the ranger attack at different ticks. So you have to kind of stand under where it spawns. And most of the time it will spawn under you on that tile that I was at. So what happens is it'll be ranger attacks first and then major right after and then melee. So I didn't do the melee guy correctly because I'm supposed to like move a little bit closer towards the melee uh, at the start so that it can be range, mage, and melee all back to back. But yeah, the melee is the least of my worries because I can usually tank it anyways. Oh, Godsword Shard 3? Yo, we got a Godsword Shard 3, boys? So this method is by far the hardest method that I've tried at Bandos. Like Mage was super easy compared to this. But yeah, the challenge is fun. Uh, one of the hardest parts, of course, is when Bandos decides to range you all day every day. And yeah, that makes it really hard for me to keep composed. So I just end up often messing up the rhythm. But here's some of the struggles. It's okay. Oh, what? Please. Oh my god. Oh god. Ah, Jesus. Whoa! <laughs> no way, bro. This is so dumb. This is so dumb, man. I don't get to practice ever, dude. Oh my god, dude. What is this? I don't even get to practice. What is even the point? Wow, dude. Man, I can't believe the RNG with God Wars recently. The chain skirt grind was literally one trip. Bandos Tassis grind, two trips. Although Armadale took like over 500, but still Bandos, wow, 37 kills, Jesus. And Pharaoh's gloves didn't take too much either, it's like 300 kills. Cause I will definitely get that melee method down, but today's not the day. Today's not the day. Wow, that's uh, that's it, you know, the Tassis, boom, we have it. Yeah, I guess we'll never get the Sang Staff then at this rate. I think the RNG is basically being traded off, you know? Instead of the Sang, it goes to the uh, mandatory stuff. Finishing Bando like it's Trailblazer. I know, dude. The Bando grind in, in this series feels like Trailblazer. So I guess that was that, dude. We can, uh, you know, progress towards the next mandatory unlock, the final unlock. Final mandatory unlock, the Dragon Hunter Lance, dude. Which will happen once we do 75 more uh, Chambers KC. But the great thing about having this set up right now. Now that I have the task is, is that uh, at the Theater of Blood. I should be able to hit a max uh, with the Scythe now. So it was a 47 before this. But now it should be a 48. And I could have done it with the Obsidian Lakes. But the plus one only meant that I was going to gain the max hit for like a very short period of time. But now I have two extra strengths so yeah the 48 is going to be very uh sustainable you know for a, quite a long period of time so yeah man the same grind is going to be a bit better a bit faster with this setup for sure and also once we get the lance once again we'll get a max sit with the tacits to go with the lance all right yeah thanks for the carries boys seven six nine dear lord well actually is that a purple Oh, it actually is a purple. Holy shit. Damn, bro. I'm a believer. Scuff is stuff. Scuff is stuff, man. Oh, boy. What should we do? Here, let's go. Come on, Sang Staff. I believe. I believe. Oh, my God. Why do I keep getting the fender, bro? At least the boys get to eat, but... Ah, just... Damn, son. There is no Sang Staff, bro. I don't know where it is. Oh, damn, the double juke. Oh, my God. That was so good. Damn, the stars aligned. And uh, we were able to pull that off. That was sick. I used to do a lot of TOB on my main account back when it first came out. And obviously, the strategies and like the gear setups are so different nowadays. So, I actually never did get to do a lot of like max melee strength TOBs back then. Just because, yeah, it wasn't a thing. But now I get to. On this account so that's a really cool experience 
Although, uh, definitely like a 7-way melee switch is quite a bit, especially at Nilo. Probably gonna just stick to 6 on most occasions. But yeah, it is pretty uh, awesome to be finally doing some max strength uh, setup here. So one of the weaknesses of the max melee setup is the fact that I cannot use my freezes as flexible as I could before having tacits. Not every time is popping crabs in my opinion viable just cause sometimes they come at really weird angles and you don't really want to risk getting next to them. But I could still freeze them if I'm fast enough like I switch into trident or something. So maybe I can still have some room but it's gonna be a lot harder though to pull off. It can prevent you from starving. So... Oh damn you guys saw that? That was crazy man. I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make that but... So I never really talk much about Zarpus, but if you have a scythe, it's like the best possible DPS against the boss by a long shot over everything. Now there's two ways to go about it. You can do the uh, four tick scythe method, which means you go in and out every four ticks. And you do end up missing uh, a little bit of damage though that way because there's a stall. But the other strat is basically the five tick method where you just go for maximum hits. And it's a little harder to do, but that's why you should prefer. But yeah, you do like splash some of the squares a bit more, but not too bad. Holy shit, we just hit it the max 48 on Zarpus, man. Holy shit. Oh, three way? Let's go. Yo, perfect. Damn, dude. That was that was awesome. Holy shit. The stars aligned and uh even though 3 spawned, it was GG. 80. Oof. I saw it was low. I went for it. <laughs> what did we get? Oh my god, triple sevens? It's a lucky number, bro. That's a lucky, lucky number. Damn, dude. Triple sevens didn't do shit. This is why I don't go to the casino. No! <sighs> save me, save me! <laughs> nice. It was worth it, it was worth it, it was worth it. <laughs> oh shit, it was going for me. Oh, holy shit, that was so last minute. Oh my god, I didn't even realize it was going for me. I, pre I pretty much ran out of rubies, so... I do have 700 diamond bolts. That I think was meant for Armadillo, but I end up getting the chain skirt pretty early on like literally the first trip back. So, holy shit, yo, grats on your T bow, dude. That's crazy. <gasps> okay, she almost died. Oh man, wait, 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 wait. Can I, can I turn this? Oh, clutch, very nice. One of my viewers gave me a good idea about a potential different setup involving my ancestral hat because barrel's gloves doesn't give max hit it only gives accuracy i mean it does give a good amount of range accuracy but to be fair i'm pretty damn accurate with all of this so i could trade a barrel's gloves for an ancestral hat and get the max hit back on my magic setup although re really the time difference between the two setups would probably be very negligible but yeah, it does sound fun though. It does sound like a fun setup, so I think we can we should mess with that, you know? The advantages to this is obviously Mage Hand almost a bit faster, Vespila is a bit faster. Although I might struggle a little bit more on Fossa. And uh Om, Om Hand maybe perhaps. But with the DXCB it shouldn't be that big of a problem. And maybe a little bit on Vanguards, but eh, we'll see, we'll see. Kinda wanna try it out though. Sounds like a fun, fun idea. Alright, let me show you guys another layout that's uh, a full prep layout that's pretty good. Just because I know a lot of you guys are not going to be experimenting as much as uh, I am. But yeah, we got Fossa, Thieving, Guardians, Mystics, Type Ropes. So this one's pretty decent. One of the biggest factors is just uh, the scab prep though. But usually you can prep the secondaries and make a bank at the start of the raid usually the scabs are next to the prep room so i rarely ever do full prep raids so i was a little slow in this one but honestly 60 minute downtime isn't too bad 
436, 12 minutes. Okay, I came down at 12 minutes and I finished the boss at 2209. So, yeah, times are times are pretty similar. That was a 10 minute home fight. 10 minute, 9 seconds. <laughs> wow, 94 crafting. Dang, way too much time spent here making blood runes, guys. Woohoo, 93 coming up too for rune crafting. So, you see all these toll flags in my inventory, like 1.4k of them. I think. This is all I need to probably wrap up the series with. I believe so, because we're getting really close, so it's getting easier to approximate. But yeah, this is awesome, man. No more having to spend money to make brews, pretty much. At least, I think. Hey, There it is. The god egg right there. Man, it's so weird getting god eggs from birdhouses, man. Yeah, the evil chicken outfit will be a lot easier to get. 